Now let's try to understand the theory of marginal utility. Here there are two important words that we have to focus on. One being the utility. Utility as such is nothing but the satisfaction that a person derives. And marginal is more in terms of additional. Now, why are these two words coming into picture? Think of any individual like you and me. We buy some goods or services. Probably I buy a television. Why do I buy it? Because I derive some kind of satisfaction by watching it. I derive some kind of utility by watching it. From consuming that particular good or a product, I am deriving some kind of satisfaction. Now this satisfaction, I can look at it in two dimensions. One I call it as the total utility or the total satisfaction. The other I look at it as a marginal utility or marginal satisfaction. So if I have consumed, let's say, or if I have purchased, let's say 10 different shirts, 10 shirts during a year, my total satisfaction, whatever uh, by consuming these 10 shirts in a particular time period is what I call as the total utility. Now, Think of it in another way. Okay, the first shirt, I purchase the second one, third one, fourth one. Okay, I am increased, the utility is increasing, increasing, increasing. I am deriving additional satisfaction. But what is traditionally observed is the additional satisfaction that you start gaining by consuming one extra unit of that good will keep falling as you consume more and more. Here, our intention when I am talking about the marginal utility is whatever is the addition to this total satisfaction that is coming up by consuming one extra unit of the good during a specific time period, rest all and uh, the consumption of the other goods remaining constant. That is what we are calling as the marginal, which means probably if I have one shirt, let's say my uh, total utility is 20 units. When I have bought the second shirt, let's say the total utility became 30 units, means the marginal utility is 10 units. When I have bought the third one, let's say the total utility has become 38 units, which means the marginal utility is 8 units. And it may so happen when I have bought the fourth, my total utility may become 42 units, which means the marginal utility is only 4 units. And when I have bought the fifth, probably my total utility is 43, which means the marginal is only 1. But if I had the sixth, it may so happen that my total utility is still 43 units, which means marginal is 0. And any more I am adding, probably my total utility is starting going down. I may not even enjoy, why am I getting more and more shirts? So my total utility may even go down, which means the marginal utility can even go negative. Now, this kind of a situation where the marginal utility is, is going down and down, though it is positive, it is it is going lesser and lesser, is what we call as the principle of diminishing marginal utility, one of the very important theories in economics. The additional utility that I am getting from consuming more and more units of a good will actually keep decreasing as we are seeing it here. And after a certain number of goods being consumed, 
It may so happen that the marginal utility can even become zero or in some cases it can even become negative. If that is the case, what, how much should I consume? What should be the optimal level of consumption that I need to get in? Because the utility as such, the satisfaction as such is very difficult to measure. I don't have meters or kilograms or uh, some units to directly measure the utility. But a simple way we talk about a measure of the utility is the maximum price. Generally, the best measure of utility we try to bring in in terms of monetary terms, right? The marginal utility we are talking in terms of monetary terms, wherein we say the maximum price any buyer is willing to pay for that particular good is what we are calling as the utility that the person is deriving out of it. Now, here we even talk about, let's say, let me uh, bring in a simple uh, logic. Let's try to uh, bring up the demand curve. Right? Let's say this is the traditional demand curve. And as we have said, or probably let me call this as a marginal utility curve. As we have also defined that as the quantity is increasing more and more, right, as I am uh, consuming more and more of a quantity, I could uh, typically see that the marginal utility is actually going down. So I can very well talk of this kind of a graph as even the marginal utility curve or even the price that is plotted on this axis. So initially, because we are saying the marginal utility is nothing but the maximum price which any individual is willing to spend for it, right? So if I try to look at it this way, and let's say I am trying to look at Q quantity, Q1 quantity being purchased by paying P1 for it, the total expenditure that was incurred is P1, Q1. But here if you see this portion, see for one good, let's say Q2, the person doesn't mind even paying pay P2 for it. Right? To consume just Q2 units, the, the person does not mind even paying P2 for it. Means, he is willing to pay a slightly higher price also to consume that first few units of that good. So, he is getting a much higher utility. Initially, probably the first unit, second unit, the consuming that one, two units, he is getting a much higher utility over the price that he has paid for it. So, the utility that he is gaining is P2 minus P1, right? By consuming, for consuming that uh, Q2 quantity, the, the, the customer is even willing to pay P2, but obviously he ends up paying P1, which means the excess is the excess utility that the customer has gained over the price that he has actually paid for it. And that is called as the marginal consumer surplus means the additional utility that the consumer has got by consuming that one unit above the price that he has really paid for it. Which means now if I look at for the different kinds of units, different number of units, if I look at the excess of marginal utility over the price that he has paid, that is what we are simply uh, calling as the different marginal surpluses. I add the marginal surpluses across all the quantities, which is I am looking at from the perspective of not the marginal utility, but the total utility above the total expenditure 
that is what we are calling as the total consumer surplus so here if you see in this figure let's say p1 q1 is the total expenditure right and then i say the total consumer surplus probably is that the area of this triangle half p2 minus p1 is the height and q1 is the width so the total consumer surplus is half q1 times p2 minus p1 this is the total consumer surplus so if i have to look at the total utility part it includes the total expenditure part as well as the total consumer surplus which means it becomes p1 q1 plus half p2 q1 minus half p1 q1 so overall it works out as half p1 q1 plus p2 q1 in other way it is talking about half q1 times p1 plus p2 is what is the total consumer surplus or total utility that the person is deriving by consuming these many units and if i look at this particular situation and probably if i have to analyze any customer if i assume that this customer is more and more rational he is making informed decisions the behavior of the consumer is more and more rational his objective is he wants to maximize the total consumer surplus and when can that happen as long as the marginal utility is greater than p which is the price which he has to pay for it go and purchase only when the marginal utility comes lesser than the price he has to stop the purchasing so until the maximizing point is wherever the marginal utility is equal to price until that train the quantity can still be purchased and consumed so that's one important that is the optimal level which can maximize the consumer surplus for any consumer and now if at all i am seeing that almost all the consumers are rational everyone is targeted towards maximizing the consumer total consumer surplus then i could clearly see that the demand curve is same as the marginal utility curve both of them mean one and the same because whatever is the maximum price the customer is willing to pay for consuming that much of quantity and so i can i can and i am seeing that the demand curve is downward sloping and so is the marginal utility curve and principle of diminishing marginal utility is directly suggesting that the marginal utility curve is downward sloping and even the demand curve is also kind of a downward sloping so when i look at from an individual standpoint the marginal utility curve right uh, the, the demand curve and the marginal utility curve are remaining to be the same so if i want to look out for the entire market rather than the individual i am simply adding up the various individual demand curves so because all the demand curves are downward sloping even the add and addition of the individual demand curves is also downward sloping kind of a graph and this represents the marginal utility of the good whatever is the slope of it it is clearly talking about the price elasticity of demand for that particular good more and more flatter it represents an elastic good more and more steeper it represents an inelastic good so this is what is the marginal utility theory but of course a few important things it is purely looking at one single good one single type of good in perspective 
it did not consider it has talked about the utility falling increasing uh, more and more uh, uh, up one quantity is getting consumed the utility is uh, falling marginal utility uh, is going down and down diminishing marginal utility all these things are coming up under the assumption or without considering cross price elasticity of demand or the income elasticity of demand the whole theory has been built only under the workout of the price elasticity of demand itself the dependence of the changes in consumption of the other goods and services need to be looked at and also a kind of dependence with respect to the income also need to be looked at which got completely ignored as a part of the model but yes some important point that we really need to appreciate is the marginal utility uh, theory helps us in terms of identifying how the yeah what is the total consumer surplus how much the consumer is uh, 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 is experiencing uh, a utility or the satisfaction about the price that he has really paid for a particular good or a service right